So just yeah, a little bit of uh, introduction about uh, me. So my name is uh, Colin. So I work at a company called Fincar. So we do uh, data, data science and uh, specifically uh, R. Um, so I do a lot of uh, open source uh, development and I'm working on the uh, Golem project uh, mainly. So I'm the lead uh, developer uh, of uh, Golem, so which is a package for um, building uh, shiny apps that are um, aim at being uh, sent to production. So um, you can find me um, on uh, Twitter. So if you want to send me a message or uh, you can tweet me and I try to be uh, quite reactive on Twitter. So uh, if you want to uh, interact, uh, please uh, feel free to reach me uh, on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, Fincar is um, a company of data science engineering. We do everything around uh, R and especially uh, around sending R uh, to production. So we do training from beginner to expert, but we do also a lot of um, software engineering and putting R uh, into production and that includes, so uh, most of what I do uh, includes sending Shiny app to production. So we build, uh, we build Shiny apps uh, that are sent to production. So uh, basically people are mostly in the uh, industry who want to uh, build a web app, uh, we build these uh, shiny app and we put them uh, to production. Uh, so uh, I've also uh, written a book, uh, a book which is called uh, Engineering Production Grade uh, Shiny App. So it's um, it's a book. So I'm uh, so I just sent back the uh, grammar review, so it should be out in print uh, this. Uh, summer, hopefully, but uh, it's a book that um, I think uh, it comes just after the uh, Mastering Shiny uh, book. So basically, it's a book for everyone knowing how to build like small size applications and uh, people that want to uh, like take the next step. So um, taking very shiny app and building something more robust and something that is more um, built for uh, production. So it's more or less um, everything um, I know uh, on building shiny application. So one of the goal was to uh, cover, in a sense, uh, middle ground uh, shiny topics, because basically um, when I started writing this book, uh, the idea was that there were a lot of uh, content on building small application, and there were a lot of content about um, sending them to production, scaling shiny app, AWS, Docker, and stuff like that. But they were like there was very few content on the very process of building this application. So all the process um, from having an ID to having a production ready uh, application. So the, it covers these, all these steps from like having the ID and sending it to production. So it doesn't cover like the basics of Shiny nor the, uh, you know, scaling Shiny and stuff like that. It's really uh, the process of building them. Um, so this book, it's available online uh, for free on engineeringshiny.org. Um, so you can find it uh, online. Um, and basically, um, one of the main uh, components of um, this workflow, this process of building uh, Shiny App is, uh, uh, revolves around uh, a package called uh, Golem. So Golem, it's uh, an R package, so it contains uh, a framework for building production-ready Shiny applications. So the idea is to um, uh, use this uh, Golem package as a tool to uh, build uh, this application. So this is, um, if it was released on the CRAN like uh, almost two years ago, and we have uh, more than um, 70,000 uh, downloads. So this is like, uh, this is getting more and more uh, popular. Um, so yeah, this is, and we just released the, uh, a new version on the CRAN. Uh, so if you want to try uh, the new version, there is a new version uh, on the CRAN of uh, Golem. So uh, the idea uh, with uh, Golem is that uh, we have a lot of tools for um, 
building a proof of concept for a shiny app, for building small shiny application. But at least before uh, Golem, there wasn't any tool for um, building this uh, application that are sent uh, to production. So basically the idea behind uh, Golem is to provide tool to um, automate uh, the tasks. So basically, uh, I, I think you didn't cover uh, modules yet, but uh, for example, creating a new module in Shiny. So um, before uh, I wrote a function to automate this process, um, the way to do it was to uh, copy and paste a skeleton from the internet or taking like another module, copying it and just like removing the parts and stuff. And the idea is um, with Golem, so there is a function called add module. And what it does is that it creates the skeleton for a module so that you don't have to think about um, how to build a module, you just have a skeleton. So of course it implies that you have a little bit of knowledge of what is a module and how to use it and what it's used for, but the idea is that once you have understood what is a module and why you should use it and um, stuff like that and all the, uh, you know, uh, the technical stuff, you don't have to think about how to write it. You just have a tool to create it. So I like to describe uh, Golem as the uh, use this for uh, Shiny apps. So if you don't know use this, uh, it's a package to, um, that helps building other packages. And what it does is that it creates um, files, it sets options, it um, does a series of things. Uh, it, it helps you like doing this stuff automatically without you having to think about how to do them. So Golem is a way to uh, yeah automate uh, this like boring stuff uh, of finding the skeleton for a module or finding the right place to put your CSS or creating a JavaScript dependency or stuff like that. All these things that are uh, kind of repetitive and you do it uh, several times uh, during your project and uh, thanks to Golem, you just have to think about how to do uh, them. Uh, yeah, and it helps, uh, the idea also was to um, provide uh, rel reliable tools because that it, as it's open source, um, we have a lot of feedback on it. So we try to improve it and we try to uh, work with the community just to make it more uh, real reliable. And of course, as it, um, as it, as it helps um, automating uh, the repetitive tasks, you gain time, of course, you don't have to lose time thinking about, yeah, the module is a good example because you don't have to think about how to write the skeleton and be sure that you have all the parts and stuff. Um, it also simplify uh, deployment because the idea is that if, um, the idea is that there are several ways to build a Shiny app um, and like you can do a quick and dirty shiny app and it will work, but um, it will work, but it will be harder to deploy. Uh, when I say deploy is that like uh, sending it to production on a server. Um, so the idea with Golem is that if everybody builds the same, uh, build a shiny apps under the same structure, we can build tool to um, help deployment. Uh, for example, if you want to deploy using Docker, if you are uh, building a Shiny app with Golem, we have a tool that uh, helps building this uh, Docker file and stuff. And it's because it's uh, under the Golem structure. And if um, if we use this uh, structure, it, um, it helps uh, with deployment. And of course, uh, it's standardized uh, teamwork because if you are building your Shiny app, as a team, uh, we have several people. Uh, if you are building with the same structure and following the same conventions, um, it will help uh, working together. Uh, for example, whenever I have a question on a Golem application, I know where to look. Um, so uh, there is um, yeah, a standard in term of uh, naming uh, the files and where to put the files and uh, things like that. So. Whenever I have like an issue on Golem or someone asks me a question about their Shiny app, as it's under the same uh, format, I can um, I can work easily with them. I don't have to uh, guess uh, or to decipher the structure. It's like a common structure. Um, of course, Golem uh, internally, uh, so it was born out of uh, an internal need. So. Um, 
we are uh, a team at Fincar and we build shiny apps uh, together. We build a lot of shiny app and it was at first um, an internal uh, need. Uh, and I use it, uh, of course, now on a daily basis. So um, I'm the first uh, Golem user. I'm the person who uh, uses uh, Golem the most. So um, yeah, I, uh, that helps, you know, having a good idea of uh, where you want the package uh, to go and the idea about future uh, development. Uh, of course, yeah, it was an internal need and we needed um, we needed this to uh, be more efficient when we are building our Shiny app. Uh, we needed a um, tool to help deployment. Uh, and also we wanted to um, share these, um, share and build uh, good practices on uh, building Shiny apps. Uh, like globally. That's why it's open source, of course. And yeah, of course, it's also um, help uh, to promote R and Shiny in production uh, if we build reliable uh, application and like re reliable softwares. So the big idea uh, behind Golem, just uh, a small uh, important note is that um, the uh, central philosophy um, of Golem is that a Shiny app is a package. Uh, so the idea was that if you think about what is a production ready Shiny app, uh, so there are a lot of things like it has the metadata. So this is what is inside the description file. Uh, of course, you are building um, a large code base. So you are going to split them into functions. So this is uh, natively in the R folder of a Shiny app of the package. Of course, you are going to build um, tests because uh, you know you don't send uh, production, uh, you don't send uh, software to production if it's not tested. So this is the standard test folder uh, of a package. Of course, you have to specify the uh, dependencies, which is um, handled by the namespace file in uh, a package. So this is like an important thing um, that our developers often forgets when we talk about um, building Shiny app for production, the dependencies. Uh, of course, uh, if you do a series of library and um, R package um, and semicolon, semicolon um, function, it will work on your machine, but it won't work on a server. So uh, handling dependencies has been an issue for uh, a lot of Shiny developers. And this is something that is helped with the package structure uh, and of course it's um, documented and, and um, documented is it's what we have in um, the man and the vignettes in the package uh, structure so the idea was to use all this stuff that already exists with the package uh, structure and uh, build on top of them because we didn't want to uh, reinvent the wheel. Uh, we want to rely on tools that are already exist, so we don't have to, um, yeah, reinvent um, things that already exist and that are widely used. So basically, uh, everything you know about building a package, it will work if you are uh, working with uh, Colin. Okay, so this is it for. Uh, for Golem, so it's a tool for uh, building your app. Um, of course, it's um, more designed for um, Shiny app that are sent uh, to production. So uh, if you are just doing like a small app for testing, it might not be worth it. But uh, as soon as you are working with other people or you are um, going to show you how to someone else, um, it's made easier that um, by uh, using Golem. So Golem can uh, may seem a little bit complex in the beginning, but uh, if you know uh, first, if you know how to build a package, so everything you know about package development, it applies to um, Shiny app build with uh, Golem. And um, so I'll do a little uh, demo just after that. But um, everything you have to do and have to know is uh, scripted, so everything is written in uh, a series of uh, scripts. So basically, um, the idea is that it, yeah, it can be a little bit frightening in the beginning, but uh, as soon as um, you realize that is it's a package and that everything is scripted, it gets uh, easier. 
Okay, so the other big idea uh, developed in uh, the book, so in the Engineering Shiny book, is um, a workflow for building Shiny app for production. So just uh, a series of steps that we follow uh, when we are uh, presented with projects, a Shiny project. Uh, so it's divided in uh, five steps. Um, so the first step is um, the, the design step. So it's like a step that we tend to uh, forget when we are um, our developers. But um, when we are presented with a project, we want to you know, uh, start coding uh, right away. But it's not like the best move. Um, basically, uh, there are still something that you will want to do before even starting to code. Uh, so I have a, um, a small example uh, from a project we had uh, where, um, so we started coding the application and uh, so we worked. So the, the application did a series of code to an API and, uh, and stuff like that. And we put the app to pro into production. So it worked on our machine, no problem. We tried to put it to production and it stopped working. So yeah, we had a series of uh, exchanges and mails with uh, the client. We tried to debug, it worked locally, no problem. Then on the server, it doesn't work until like it took us like two or three weeks um, before we had an answer from the IT saying that the server doesn't have access to the internet. So it's like a small things where we lost like a couple of weeks just trying to debug and stuff. And this is something that like ask a question before you start coding because like, we would have done things differently from the beginning if we had uh, knew that. And some of the stuff, um, we had some projects uh, uh, where people wanted an app um, and they work in a farm and they have, uh, I think it's tractors, like, uh, uh, you know, they, I think they, uh, they use in farms and they want to shine up on the computer uh, inside there. Um, inside the work environment so it's very different from an application you'd build for someone uh, you know sitting at a desk so these are the kind of things that you can get from uh, asking questions um, to the it to people that are going to use the application um, something important uh, that you can do is building uh, personas so personas are uh, who who is or who are the typical users of the application. So for example, when you are building an application, you can say um, this application is going to be used by someone who, uh, I don't know, doesn't know anything about statistics. Uh, so you might want to explain the concept a little bit more because they want like to be guided through the application, to be guided through, uh, you know, all the uh, statistic statistical concepts that are used and, uh, like have more explanation about the results but on the other end if you are building an application for uh, people who are very knowledgeable in statistics and they know the concept and they, maybe they don't want the explanation they, they just want the results so this is the kind of thing that you can get from asking questions and building the personas and uh, building the, the um, concept maps around um, what are the different part of the app? Who is using them? What are the output? What do they expect, uh, et cetera. So this is the first, um, and I think it's a very important step. Yeah, the first step about um, like designing, like getting all the things, um, asking questions and all the things you need to know about the application, uh, you know, be, because you'd better ask this question now. Um, it's yeah, it's better to know things upfront than uh, to discover them along the way. So the second step kind of um, important uh, too is um, uh, you'll start by se separating the uh, backend uh, from the UI. Uh, so basically the backend is all the uh, business logic. So all the functions that um, that can be used outside the app. Uh, for example, um, if you're, I don't know, if you are connecting connecting to a database and do, doing a, um, a query, you don't need to be inside the Shiny app to do that. Uh, if you are doing a plot, you don't need to be inside the Shiny app to do a plot. 
um, if you are doing a filter, you don't need to be inside the a Shiny application to, um, to do a filter. So basically the idea with uh, writing everything into an R markdown is that it forces you to um, write all the business logic down and you not, uh, you know, if you have to debug something, you are not debugging shiny issues and backend issue at the same time. So basically you are not trying to debug reactivity and debug your business logic at the same time. Uh, so basically if I can maybe, oh. uh, okay, so if I open a new tab and I do that. So I have a use case at the end of a book about that. Um, so this is building an application from the start uh, to finish. So for example, this is like a specification you'll receive. Uh, we want to build a small application to minify CSS, JavaScript, uh, HTML, and JSON. Um, first, yeah, deciphering the specification. So this is the part um, I described before. Uh, thinking about observation, the user ex uh, experience, building the uh, concept map. So uh, there is an issue with rendering it on the book. I should never look. But building the concept map, thinking about the end users, who are they, are they uh, tech literate? Um, how will they use the application, etc., etc. Things like, something like the version of the browser they are using uh, can have an impact on the way you build your application. And this is not something you are going to think about uh, because most uh, shiny developers don't have like the, uh, a good web development background, but like Internet Explorer, which is now Edge, Microsoft Edge, uh, doesn't work the same way as Google Chrome, which doesn't work the same way as Firefox. So basically depending on the uh, browser, the version and stuff like that, you can have different version and different rendering of the app and your app might not work uh, on certain version of uh, browser. For example, I think like Shiny might have dropped support for Internet Explorer before version nine, I think, uh, or something like that, like recently. So uh, in some company, they are pretty conservative with the version of uh, software. So this is something you might want to know uh, upfront. Okay, so this is an example of uh, building, um, building personas. Okay, so the idea with this app is to build an application that minifies uh, CSS and JavaScript. So basically in web development, you take your CSS file and you remove all the unnecessary uh, spaces, um, stuff like that. The idea is to create the smallest file as possible because on the web, you know, every byte uh, counts. So the idea is um, to do that, but these, uh, uh, this function to minify a file, they don't need Shiny to work. So basically the idea is to write these function outside of Shiny inside an, uh, a Markdown file. So this is an example of writing it down outside of the uh, Shiny application. So there is an example uh, of that. And of course, um, yeah, the, the, the idea is to um, do everything into a vignette. I think the vignette should be uh, online. So basically you have a description of what the application does uh, without, any, um, um, without any reactive uh, behavior. So uh, if ever uh, I'm writing uh, the uh, minifier, so uh, the things that help minifying the files, I just have to de debug these function. I don't have to debug um, things about is my input correct? Uh, is the rendering correct? Is my reactive values uh, correct? Is my reactive working? Uh, is my input dollar null? Or do I have a typo inside the ID or things like that? I don't have to think about this. Uh, so I, I have my um, background logic written down there. 
So this is like something very important uh, to do first uh, because yeah, it really helps building the application um, more quickly. Um, yeah, and another good example is that um, if you have like a plot, you are gener generating a plot uh, and uh, you have to spend, I don't know, um, five minutes just clicking on stuff before trying the plot. That means that every time you change the plot title or you change a geom or you change a theme, you have to rerun the application and you have to spend five minutes just clicking on everything before, um, before seeing the result and before checking that you have corrected the bug or you have like implemented the good features. So the idea with this like prototyping in R&D is write everything down and don't be like trapped into uh, the reactive, um, the reactive reactivity of Shiny. So everything should be a function. So write a function for your backend. So this is the uh, working with the backend in um, RMD. So then, so we build like the backend, so all the uh, business logic um, inside an RMD, and then we build the front end um, with. Um, you can use uh, something called shiny zoom. So basically, shiny zoom. Yeah. An example. Uh, of it. So shiny zoom, I think it's calling HTML template. Yeah. So shiny zoom is uh, is a package that creates a random uh, plot, random table, random output, and random print. Uh, the idea is to build uh, the front end uh, just uh, using these element. Uh, for example, if you reload this application, every time you reload this application, you'll have a different uh, application. But the idea is here to show what the uh, UI looks like. So for example, if, if you are my client, I can show you this application and I can say, this is what the app will look like. Can you give me feedback on this UI? So you're not thinking about um, is the plot correct? Is the output of the model correct? Is the result correct? You're just focusing on, uh, is this the UI you are wanting? Because something that happens a lot uh, if, you, if you're building a Shiny app for a client is that you are going to spend uh, one week building like an algorithm or something like a, a smart backend. You're showing the application and uh, your client will say, I, I prefer this button to be blue or no, no, I, I, I don't like the gray background. Can you? use another color and basically you you want you want them to give you feedback on your algorithm not on the ui and like doing things in doing the backend in an rmd you can show them an html output and on the other end you can show them a ui and they can give you feedback on one what you are expecting them uh, to give you feedback on uh, for example uh, i'm working right now on a shiny app and I just finished uh, today the implementation of the backend in a markdown. So I send them an HTML file and they have, and I'm starting working on the UI tomorrow. So I have a couple of weeks, I think it's two weeks to work on the UI while they are like reading the backend and taking time to give fit, get feedback on uh, this backend. So separating um, the backend from the UI, it really helps uh, being more uh, efficient on the long run. So to do that, uh, there are uh, two things I like to use. So there is Excalidraw. So Excalidraw is uh, a tool to draw uh, to draw uh, things. So this is like okay, an example of. Um, so I'm working on uh, another app. So I'm saying this is like the UI. So you can draw stuff. Uh, you know, you can build if you want to put. Uh, things there so it's uh, it's really a nice tool to um, to help you draw a ui and once you have your template you can use shiny zoom to build um, to build that so this is the prototype part so building the backend inside uh, markdown and then uh, building the ui with uh, shiny zoom uh, then step three is uh, 
actually building the app. So basically you co you connecting the pipes. Uh, so you have a backend on one end and you have the UI uh, on the other end. And the idea is to now connect uh, everything together. So it's supposed to be a shorter uh, step because you already have everything. You're just making the connection between uh, the two. Then step four is uh, strengthen. So building all the tests uh, for your functions, uh, building new tests uh, for your backend, building new tests for your front end, and uh, building the load test. So there are like three things you, uh, you are going to want uh, to test on your app, the backend, the uh, front end, and of course, the uh, load. The load is how, uh, how does your um, application behaves with many users. And finally, there is the deploy, uh, deploy part. So you can, uh, there are two main uh, ways right now to deploy Shiny apps. So there is Docker on one end and there is, uh, there are all the R Studio products uh, that can be used to, uh, to do that. Okay, so that's it for this presentation key okay. oh. right thanks colin thanks colin um yeah no that's really uh it's really interesting we we do have quite a few uh questions sure. i know that i i've written a few up and and i think andrew added some to, to the so so there are uh, t uh questions available from the floor if anyone wants to um uh, speak up um but yeah no that was really interesting so um can it can i can i ask just a, a, a little bit more about your kind of background because um, so so shiny came out 10 years ago nine or ten years ago the, the the very first thing were you were you working in R or in web development or anything like that at the time uh, so yeah I, I before joining finger I was working in a company that did web stuff so yeah right yeah. so you were pretty um, confident at the you, you knew stuff about the the, yeah. the the web languages and the um the, yeah. the kind of yeah. user experience side of definitely uh, yeah world. yeah because a lot of that is is quite foreign i know that you 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 mentioned it in the um talk but yeah uh, thinking about how your users are going to um use your app is quite uh <laughs> it's not something yeah. I'd considered, but yeah. Yeah, I try, I try to, yeah, there is, there is a long chapter about user experience inside the Engineering Shiny book. So yeah, mm -hmm. working about how people used to read the book, uh, to read the, um, the web, stuff like um, web accessibility also, which is yeah. uh, like, uh, you know, making your application um accessible to people with disabilities sure, uh, sure. so it can be uh, physical or stuff like that so yeah there is a lot of things i i try to put like a lot of things around user experience and sure, yeah building sure. the personas and stuff so. and 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 based on that do you, does does Gollum have any kind of um auditing tools or anything to to check if your app will work on older browsers or whether it's uh, whether you've got what are the alt text for the figures and things like that that are kind of it doesn't but it should <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah it's kind of uh, so testing for the browser is kind of hard because you you know you there are some tools but you have to have like internet explorer and safari and google chrome on mac and google chrome on um so it's kind of hard to build tools so there are tools available in um, in the CI so you can use like docker based solution but it's kind of hard to build it like just in R. but sure. uh, and yeah there should, there should be some uh, so this is something yeah I've been thinking about like mm -hmm. building tests for accessibility in shiny but it's like a big things you know you have to there are a lot of things you would want to check and yeah it's kind of a big Big things to do, and I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to create like half a tool. You know, I, I want yeah. something that's complete and that, that I'm sure uh, will work. But the shiny team they took like um, some someone work inside the shiny team like last summer on accessibility. So they had mm -hmm. they had someone working on. Them. So I think I think 
if I remember correctly, someone was blind and he worked on like all the accessibility inside Shiny. And yeah. Oh. So the since I think it's version 1.5, it's kind of like better with accessibility because sure, it works sure. like harder on it. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, and um, um, so have you have you seen uh, how has Shiny changed then? I mean, since its in initial kind of release, as 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 a developer working with Shiny, has there been huge changes in how you approach um, building I, the apps or i think it, it it used to be like a small tool to do proof of concept just quick demo app and i think in maybe in the last two or three years like it's been more getting more legitimate as a tool for production real production applications you know and like a real tool for web developers, but yeah. no, yeah. you know, the, the shiny developers, I think like shiny developers are no web developers, but they need, so yeah, sure. I, I think we need to, as, uh, as the, the community of shiny developers need to learn more about web development and because like, we're not building small app for stat concepts we're building like production application so yeah it's better if we work on sure. that and there's been but like there's a lot a, of but there's so stuff. many it, but that opens up a whole can of worms because <laughs> as a um well i mean i was working in biology originally but like do you focus on uh the database access or the um styling or uh javascript or html or all these you know this whole kind of cloud of things that surround <laughs> web development yeah so there is like if if you go into the web development world there are front-end developer and back-end developers so i think we will you can still as shiny is a web application so for example you can work with a web designer to give you uh, we did that for example we worked with web designer that designed fronts and themes and stuff and we integrated them into a shiny app so yeah so i think even more as our developers are used to write you know scripts and back-end code so if you had to focus it's better to work on to think about all the back-end stuff uh, unless you are very good you have good taste for design and things and i think it depends but yeah if if you can be good with working all with all the back end of shiny and stuff you can work with a web de web designer that will provide you html and css and javascript and you can integrate them into shiny after that cool i think um andrew bates has a couple of questions if you'd like uh, to yes please um so you mentioned the scala draw tool to help like draw out a ui um are there any other tools outside of like the R or Studio AQ system they use, like, you know, does VS Code have any particular extensions that can be helpful or any, any other sort of tools that you use? Uh, I can't remember the name, but yeah, in, if you look at, um, there are a lot of tools inside the web development world that are used to sketch front and that, um, I can't remember the name, but yeah. Uh, there is a specific tool that people use inside the web development world where there is a web designer that creates like the the, uh, the design and it can be automatically turned into CSS and uh, JavaScript and stuff. So yeah, there, there are a lot of tools inside the web development community. This is something pretty common to do so because it's even more divided. So they have uh, user experience designer, UI designer, and then uh, front-end developers so basically if a user uh, user designer user experience designer and ui designer work together they provide css to the front-end developers but integrate it mm -hmm. into the uh, code base so yeah there are plenty of tools inside the web development world to do that
Okay. Um, so um, there was a question. I don't know whether Priyanka's in the room, actually. She she was asking about um, whether there were any kind of uh, preferred tools for like debugging and, and kind of uh, testing shiny apps that um, are, yeah. are beyond the, the, the kind of uh, shiny test and, and test that that we, we, we kind of have heard about. Yeah, so basically, um, the idea with separating the backend from the front end is, of course, that you are going to debug and test like standard functions, uh, all your backend. Um, uh, I guess it's this. Uh, so, of course, yeah, you're going to use um, for testing your backend the standard uh, tool with like test that. Um, so, there are stuff. Um, inside the web development world uh, to um, test your Shiny application. So you are going to test uh, for the front end and the most, uh, uh, the most common, so the most known uh, tool to do that is uh, called Puppeteer. So Puppeteer is uh, written in Node.js and what it does is that it, uh, it takes Google Chrome uh, at less. So it's Google Chrome, but without the front end and it runs code. So you can connect um, You can connect to the application. You can run some uh, JavaScript uh, and then uh, see if uh, the HTML is rendered properly and stuff. So this mm -hmm. is like, uh, I've got an example inside the book yeah. of uh, you know using this code. So of course, you, ha you have to know a little bit of uh, JavaScript to do that. But people in the web development world are all using this, uh, sure. this tool. And it can be uh, when, put in when, you, when you're writing these things. How how does that fit into an R package structure? Do you do, do you write your puppeteer scripts in? Um, I in put it into the uh, into the CI. Right. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Uh, but um, yeah, you, you but you can you can put it into the package if you want to do it. Yeah. So there is no uh, no problem. For example, you can. So there is inside a Golem application a folder called dev, and this is where we usually put all the stuff around development. So it's ignore, so it's uh, build ignore, so we can put things about development. But if you want to uh, create a script, um, okay. yeah. Okay. But but in this in this setting, so Puppeteer, it you have to already know what the um, like the HTML IDs and. The, the the structure of the page would yeah. be you know so there is to... there is a something called uh, there is a Google Chrome extension called Puppeteer Recorder. So basically, what it will do is that it will create. I think I have it installed already. But you start recording, you click on stuff, and it creates the uh, Puppeteer code. Hmm. It's kind of uh, you, you don't have to you don't have to think about what you yeah. are doing. So you just have to re to copy and paste uh, stuff. Right. That's quite neat. Um, I think um, Andrew McDonald has a question. Andrew's been using Golem quite a bit. Uh, hold on, is he gonna? Yes. Hi. We actually, um, Colin, we met briefly online a couple of weeks hey, ago. Hey, Andrew. How are you? Colin. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah. Yes. I led the Golem revolution at my small lab. <laughs> um, because it, exactly as you, you couldn't hear me cheering before when you were talking about uh, <laughs> the necessity of having everyone on the team using the same structure. It's amazing. Um, one thing though, that uh, in your proposed workflow that I haven't managed to adopt as well as I want is the, the mock-up of, of the UI. And actually just yeah. this week, my boss told me, oh, you know, try it two ways and see which one works better. And so now I'm suddenly much more motivated to, to understand shiny Ipsum and, um, so, but my, my curiosity though is like, sometimes we have, it isn't simply, oh, we want to show a plot. Like maybe people are going to interact with the plot. Maybe it's a leaflet map. You're going to click on it or something. I feel like Shiny Ipsum isn't great for mocking up interactive, where like input it, yeah. uh, visualizations or things like that. Is that so? Yeah, it's kind of odd uh, because, yeah, I was thinking about integrating leaflet, but it's kind of, yeah, how to, yeah, there are so many things you can do with leaflet. So it's kind of hard to have like standard uh, random leaflet. Uh, it's quite kind of, because uh, you have to compute the points and everything. And I'm not that good with, you know, geospatial data. So 
but yeah, that would be that would be great. Yeah, like I, I definitely found that your um your the, the mock-up app that you showed with made with shiny Ipsum looked really professional. And like I could see someone being like, oh, that's close to what we wanted, or that's in our company colors, or or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so was that done with Shiny Ipsum or I, I sense it's more like CSS and JavaScript and all the development stuff you were talking about in the UI on top of it? Uh, yeah, so the, the, the app, so the old uh, mockup is using um, HTML template from um, Shiny. So there is uh, something, uh, a function called HTML template where you can point to an HTML file and you have like, uh, it looks like glue. So you put like, uh, things inside it and you it's um i can show you the code by the way uh so it's yeah so you have the html and inside the um ui you say html template you got the file the path to the html file and you say first for example it's going to be this content and if you go to uh If you go to the HTML templates, it's so you got your HTML templates and you've got uh, let me check. So this like for third, second, and where is first? So you got first here, and basically you are you're saying HTML template and like fill this space with uh, with first with the output of calling this module. But yeah, so this is a mix of uh, using the HTML template function and uh, Shiny Zoom. But, uh, and the UI itself is from W3 CSS. So we have a series of templates that you can reuse. But basically I took like one of these HTML and I used it inside, uh, inside Shiny. So this is also something uh, you can do if you work with like a web designer team. So they are going to provide you with HTML files and CSS file and like you're taking this HTML file and you can insert Shiny input and output inside it. That's really cool. Thanks. I think we have a, other questions, so I'll, I'll give up the mic now. See you on Twitter. <laughs> sure. Hey, Colin. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I like a lot of your stuff on Twitter, but you probably have no idea who I am. That's not <laughs> creepy at all. But um, I just had a question about uh, Docker files. I know you have a really useful Gollum function that adds a Docker file um, for deployment. Do you have any tips on reducing the size of your Docker image and maybe some first places to start to look? Uh, I think that function is is fantastic for you know installing each of the packages one by one that are the dependencies in, in your Gollum app. But I don't know if you have any tips when you're going through the process of trying to shrink the size of your image on how you would edit that file. Yeah, so um, basically there are Two uh, two issues. The first is that the uh, Rockovus uh, Docker file might be a little bit heavy. So um, one thing you might want to do is just to um, start for from like a blank Docker and install R yourself because like the Rockovus has you know stuff for PDF and LaTeX and stuff like that. So I think it can be a way to do it. And we are also working on making Golem lighter uh, because, um, but this is like, uh, I didn't have, have enough time to do this for the last release. But the idea is that if you are deploying an app with Golem right now, you are depending on Golem and Golem depends on, uh, I don't know, use this and stuff like that. But the idea is to lower the number of dependencies of Golem so that you don't have to install that much um, Dependency. So it should be like in a future release, it should be like lighter uh, in terms of dependencies. But yeah, I, I, I know, I know, uh, I know what you're talking about. We had, we had this issue too, and it, it can, can be an issue. And um, yeah, you can also try lowering the number of dependencies you add on top of 
email application. So I'm just trying to check where this is. And yeah, I think the rocker might be a little bit easy in terms of uh, byte. So yeah, because we have LaTeX and stuff installed. So maybe you can try installing R uh, yourself. Mm -hmm. That might be yeah, fun. no, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Do you ever what? use the uh, R RENV, RNs package instead of, you know, the utilities that you have in, in Gollum? Yeah, so this is also something we want to work on because um, um, the idea is right now, if you have um, RNV and you are creating your Docker file, it's ignored. You, you don't take the, uh, so the idea would be that uh, to detect if you are using it and using it inside the Docker file. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's something you can do. Just instead of installing everything you do, uh, our own restore. I think restore. there is an issue yeah. right now on Golem. Uh, okay. Uh, Thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry for the sorry. sorry for the second question. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Appreciate cool. it. Thank you, uh, Colin. Can I ask you uh, another question? Sorry. We're about to uh, move into the third part of the Master in Shiny book, which is all on reactivity and. Um, what uh, Hadley refers to as the reactive graph. And I, uh, and I noticed in his book and also in your book that there's a lot of kind of, um, there's a lot of places where you draw out diagrams of, so like you had a kind of use case diagram or a kind of wireframe of how an app, yeah. you know, what, what function it uh, performs. And, and similarly, Hadley draws out these graphs to connect interactive components together when you're i don't know whether it's a um a web development general thing or whether it's a, a specifically to shiny and reactivity do you, do you find yourself drawing a lot of um pictures when you're building apps or when you're designing apps um, yeah even uh, yeah inside the first step where we draw uh, we ask a question with draw concept map about, about um, all thing work and like if there is so I'm working right now in on an app where there's a work, workflow so we create requests and we want them to follow some step depending on where uh, which step it is who you are etc etc so yeah there is big uh, big picture and I think it's easier uh, to uh, collaborate uh, if you're working on di diagrams and stuff like that because it, you are it's easy, it's easier to exchange with someone about plots or about a drawing than about code so yeah yeah cool cool and uh, presumably you can keep uh, a watch over how complex your app is getting if you can't describe what it's doing in a yeah a, a, a drawing or something um yeah um so um there's um the no one particular jumping in with any additional questions so i thought i might ask you about the r community because i know that you're quite a um you're quite a prominent figure in the r community oh. on twitter at <laughs> least i don't know about uh the, the rest of the world. But I, I was just wondering how you have found it, having come from different languages and things like that, com, you know, uh, and, and it just it just in general, kind of. Yeah, I think what, what I enjoy the most is that people are more welcoming, basically, and went down. Because, for example, um, I, I used to go to web development conferences, and I still uh, have all two meetups from time to time, and basically they are like, you know, uh, 50, dude, 50 dudes and uh, one girl in the room and basically just, you know, having more uh, diversity and like uh, people are generally more welcoming and uh, even more with uh, people uh, with beginners. Uh, because yeah. for example, if you go to a tech uh, conference or into a tech community on Twitter and you don't know anything, uh, you know, about yeah. a subject you are going to uh, to be told you are stupid or your question are stupid and sure, this sure. like this doesn't happen a lot so even on you know stack overflow so i ask questions about javascript from time to time and just i remember having someone saying first uh, why the fuck do you want to do that <laughs> just like the only answer i got on my question sure. <laughs> so uh, on, on that note though is there anything particular that you you've done with like 
Gollum in or, it, it, it to kind of widen the net of who might contribute to it or anything or to make it a more welcoming package for open source contributions or anything um, 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 I, don't I, um, I don't know i try to i try to answer issues and to answer people and i try to to stay friendly and just to point people to good uh, resources and, and i think I think something which is important as an open source developer is to remember that people that are, that are opening issues, for example, or asking questions, it might be not that easy for them. And uh, like maybe it's like the third or fourth or tenth time you hear this question, but mm -hmm. it's the first time this question, this person is asking a question. So I think it's important to keep that in mind that people like most people want to help and most people are, you know, um, good people and just want to ask questions and they just want to help. So it's important to keep that in mind, I think. Cool, cool. Well, um, yeah, so I think we've come to the end of our time. And um, yeah, I ought to uh, thank you, like really, uh, thank you for, for, for Welcome. Uh, com coming along to this this week. You 